Hi, in this video I'm going to show you quickly how to draw a shear force and bending moment diagram. This method works all the time and uh, is really, really easy. It doesn't involve cutting up the beam into different pieces and finding uh, the forces inside the beam. Uh, all you have to do is find the external forces and then you can go ahead and start drawing your shear uh, force diagram and then your bending moment diagram. So uh, here you can see we have a beam subject to external forces and external moments. We have 12 kilonewton meters at A. Uh, from B to C we have a uh, distributed load of 6 kilonewtons per meter. We have an external force of 6 kilonewtons at C, an external moment at C of 12 kilonewtons, and finally uh, 3 kilonewtons at E. So first step, we got to find the reaction forces um, RB and RD. So we got a reaction force right here and one right here. Okay, now since this point of this video isn't to uh, find external forces, I'm just going to write down the values of those forces right here. So we, just so you know, we did the, I did the sum of the moments um, at B equal to zero, and I found that uh, R D is equal to 12 kilonewtons. And then I did the sum of the forces in Y equal to zero. And I found that RB is equal to 21 kilonewtons. All right, so, so here we got 21. And here we got 12. And now we can start basically drawing our uh, shear force diagram. So, how it works is um, for the shear force, you start from the left to the right. Make sure that when you draw these, you have your points uh, corresponding. And I start at A, and I, and I look, are there any forces acting on A? There aren't. So there's basically this line is right on the uh, x-axis. So there's no force all the way up to B. At B, always you always want to look first at the point loads. So we have a point load of 21 pushing it up. So we're going to go up by 20, sorry, by 21, and then we'll take care of the, the, the 6 kilonewton per meter. So we're going up here to 21, and then this is going to do a decrease, a constant decrease in the force, if, in the shear, and it's basically uh, 6 times 24. This is equivalent here to 6 times uh, 4 equals 24 kilonewtons. So that means we're going to go from 21 minus 24, which is negative 3. That means this is going to cross uh, and give a negative 3. So just in case you're wondering, the slope of this line is basically negative 6. Um, so here we're at negative 3. Now this isn't to scale, but that's okay. And it's important to find this uh, the distance in x from here to here. In this case, you just do 21 divided by 6, which gives 3.5. That means 3.5 meters from b to the point where there's the shear is 0. And that means that here this is also 0 0.5. And this is important for drawing it here. Um, OK, so we get up to here, and then there's 6 pushing it down. So we're going from negative 3, we're going to pushing down another negative 6 to negative 9. So negative 3 minus 6 equals negative 9. So um, now we're going from C to D, and there are no forces. And just keep in mind that when we're doing the shear, we're not looking at the external moments. We're only looking at the external forces. Um, so from C to D, there's no forces, so it stays constant. Um, at D, don't forget, there's the uh, reaction force of D, 12. So minus 9 plus 12, we're at plus 3. And then there's no forces again until we hit the negative 3 and we're back to 0. Now this is really important. You should always end up at 0 um, at the end of your, your diagram. Otherwise, you made a mistake. Great, so um, we basically finished our shear moment diagram, uh, sorry, a shear force diagram, 
And now we're going to do the bending moment diagram. So to do the bending moment diagram, essentially it's an integral of the shear force diagram. But there's going to be um, the constant that are going to change things up a bit. And those are the external moments. Now, it's kind of weird, but an external moment that's positive, with your, if you do it with your right hand, uh, the right hand rule, this is equal to negative on the, uh, sorry, on the bending moment diagram. Okay, so this is going to be a negative. So again, we're going to start from the left, and we're going to look at the external um, moment. It's 12, so this is it's positive with our thumb, but positive with our thumb is negative on the on the diagram. So we're going we're starting at negative 12, and then we're going to uh, increase or decrease based off the areas given in this shear force diagram. So the area there's no nothing here, so we're just going to stay constant. And then once we hit B, this here is positive, and we need to find this area. So very easy, it's a triangle. So we do 21 times 3.5 divided by 2, and that gives 36.75. So we're going from negative 12 plus 36.75. So we're going all the way up to 24.75. Now we're doing an integration here. And the integration, the integral of a line that's sloping is a parabola. And remember that if you're going from a line that's going down and you're integrating, that's going to give you a parabola going downwards. If your line is increasing, you're getting a parabola going upwards. So here, we're going, a parabola is uh, going downwards. And uh, just so you know, whenever you hit like a zero here, that's the top of your parabola. So our parabola is going to go up, at this, up to this point. And then it's going to go back down because now the area is negative. So you're, it's giving negative values for your, uh, for your bending moment diagram. So here we go. Negative uh, 12 plus 36.75 gives 24.75. This right here reduces it by 0.75. So we're at 24. Okay, great. So now we got to look at the, the next thing. But before we do the areas again, there's an external moment, negative 12. So we're pushed down to 12. Now we take this area here. So it's negative 9 times the distance, 2. So it's a rectangle, so it's 9 times 2. So we're going to decrease by 18. So 12, obviously minus 18, minus 6. So uh, this time, since it's a here it's a horizontal line, it's decreasing in a slope line here. Now we're at minus 6. Finally, the last thing here is 3 times 2, because we have 3 as a value, 2 is the distance. So we're back at 0. And again, you should always be back at 0, because you can see that there shouldn't be any moments at the end of the beam. And that's pretty much it. Hope you found this uh, helpful, and if you got any questions, feel free to ask me, and good luck.